Hi, I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. Today, it's a super special edition because we're going to answer the question, what's it like to be a cruise ship captain? We're going to take you on board, behind the scenes, and on the bridge, next on Beyond Your Backyard. Beyond Your Backyard is being brought to you in part by the following. With Phil, there's only one. My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel, and I still do today. But you know what I've learned? There's so much more that brings us together than divides us, which is why I've made it my mission to do the very same things you can do, but to take you beyond the experiences, to uncover the soul of every place we visit. Let me introduce you to the people, the places, and the secrets that remind us how exciting it is to share with one another, to understand one another, and to realize just how connected we really are. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is Beyond Your Backyard. Thank you for watching and welcome. As you know, each week we learn more about fascinating places all over the world, from big cities to quaint towns and villages, all trying to capture the soul of every place we visit and hopefully inspire you to do the same on your next vacation. As you can imagine, we rack up thousands of miles getting to these places on airplanes, on foot, in cars, on trains, and cruise ships, which reminds me, you know, I've been sailing personally and professionally on both big ships and small ones since 1995. I know, where does the time go? But each and every time, I'm always interested in the most senior officer on board, and that, of course, is the captain. On this particular episode, thanks to the generosity of Carnival Cruise Line, we've stepped on board Carnival Horizon to meet and learn more about and walk in the very footprints of Captain Vincenzo Elcaras. If you've never sailed before, I'm certain you will love learning more about and seeing this fascinating life at sea, both on the bridge and off. Let's get started. According to the Cruise Lines International Association, the cruise industry is a multi-billion dollar business. As of today, there are more than 50 cruise lines with ships sailing oceans and rivers around the world. Just about every type of sailing experience can be found in today's vast cruise market, from sightseeing tours to private yacht rentals to massive mega ships. In 2017, more than 25 million people worldwide took a cruise. The most popular destination, the Caribbean. The second most popular destination, the Mediterranean. The cruise industry is an economic powerhouse supporting local economies all over the world by both indirect and direct spend by both passengers and crew. Now on board Carnival Horizon, you'll find 1,400 crew members, all under the direction of the captain. Captain, this is a beautiful ship you have here. Yes, thank you. And you have been on the sea how many years? On the sea, I've been uh, more than 30 years. You still love it? I love it like it was the first day. Why? First of all, I was born in a place uh, where the sea it's uh, it's around me mm -hmm. all uh, all my life, and uh, I grow up uh, in a family where they love the sea. And uh, like 14, 15 years old, when I started to go to the high school, mm -hmm. I thought that's what uh, I want to be one day. I want to be a captain. So I spend uh, all my time on the books. Uh, work hard, study hard, and I was able to realize my dream. Passenger vessel, shipping vessel, did you know what, what yes. you wanted to captain? Yeah. My father used to work on a passenger vessel, so we always live with the culture about the passenger ships. Then uh, I spent all the 32 years on the passenger vessels. I know you work out every day, almost every yes, day, right? Yes, every day, yes. Very important. Yes, it's very important to be fit, uh, mentally fit, uh, and physically fit. Do you ever leave the ship? Are you? Can you leave the ship? Oh, of course, yes. Do you? Uh, 
Yes, so sometimes uh, I take a walk outside. I have a staff captain uh, who is the second in command of the vessel and uh, will take the responsibility of the ship when I'm away from the ship. But I take sometimes a walk just uh, to relax, uh, to get some fresh air. Should we go take a little walk? Yes. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Italy, yeah. Sicily. From, from Sicily, really? Yes. How long do you spend away at sea? I do three months on board, three months off. Wife? Yes. Yeah. But she's used to that schedule, yes? Yes, we used to do worse uh, <laughs> period on board. That means yeah. in the past uh, I used to do uh, also six months on board, uh, three months off. You know, three and three, it's, that's, it's that's great doable. schedule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I'm home, I like to do teaching to the to some of the schools, private schools, I do that. Really? Yeah, yeah. What else? And then uh, I do training for uh, the new officers. They want to take your trainings. Oh, of course, when I'm home, I have a lot of things to do also, like uh, um, stuff that my wife uh, Tell me to do it. <laughs> well, sure, you have a, you do it. Wait a minute, yeah. you have a honey-do list? Oh, of course. Hi. Yes, I have a list like you have to clean this, you have to paint this, you have to... Whoa, whoa, this. Captain, wait a second. Are you saying you go home and you report to another captain? Oh, of course. Uh, the <laughs> captain wife. <laughs> captain wife, of course. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> what time do you start your day in the morning? This morning I wake up uh, around 5.30. Okay. And uh, I came on the bridge at uh, 6 o'clock. Started at six because we were gonna arrive here in Grand Turk. Yes, at the seven we were alongside. Got it. So then things really ramp up in terms of the yes. activities. Yes. So chronologically here in your day, you have lunch. Do you eat with other people or do you eat by yourself? No, usually I always uh, like to eat with other people. Yeah. Uh, other officers or? With uh, some of the senior officers. I eat with the chief engineer, with uh, the staff captain, uh, mm -hmm. the hotel director, sometimes he comes over. Other people, whoever likes to join me yeah. for dinner, I'm, I'm lo you know, what I, I like to talk. Yeah. So they feel, I think, comfortable to talk with me about they do. anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so in the afternoon, what are you doing in the afternoon? In the afternoon uh, means uh, I work until uh, 5, 6 o'clock after I take uh, a little bit of a break. Does that mean nap? No. For me, break means re read some books. Really? Or relaxing, watching some uh, videos, some movie. My, my hobby is uh, reading uh, books yeah. and collecting books. I, I read uh, everything that uh, I am able to read. Old Man in the Sea? <laughs> All the men in the sea, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you really do have to love it. Isn't that something you tell young people? Of course, you need to be motivated every day. Yeah. And the motivation is uh, only comes from a passion and uh, from the fact that you love your job, otherwise you don't have. Some have described modern day ship design as floating cities at sea. And you know what? They're right. Carnival Horizon, it's one of the newest ships in the fleet, and it's an excellent example of modern design and functional use of the space for both fun-seeking guests and the hard-working crew. This ship, like others in the industry, is an engineering masterpiece. It's vibrant, fun, and perfectly appointed to meet and exceed guest expectations of both first-timers and experienced cruisers. The Carnival Cruise Corporation is an industry leader in providing safe and fun vacations to millions of consumers worldwide. By now you can see the captain isn't just a figurehead, he's a real person, which means he has to eat just like the rest of us. But if you're wondering, where does he take his meals? Well, because he's the captain, he can pretty much eat wherever he likes, in the dining rooms, in the specialty restaurants, or in a private officer's dining room behind the scenes. Now his meals are prepared by the executive chef and in a special kitchen just off I-95. The executive chef is also responsible for feeding the entire Hired crew of 1,400 in the crew mess. Not to mention three meals a day plus snacks and room service for the 4,500 guests on board. It's a massive undertaking, which is why I decided to take a tour of the galley. He's Kalki, good to meet you, man. Very nice to meet you, Eric. This is gonna be an amazing tour. Where are we starting? What well, is this called? This is the I-95. Uh, it's basically the, the main highway for the entire ship back of house operations. All right, well, we're on Carnival Horizon. Does that mean that other ships have different highways? No, 
They all call the I-95. That is actually yeah. as uh, the same with Carnival. Everything is a standard across the fleet. So any ship you go, you ask them, where's the I-95? The guys will be able They'll to tell know. you. Guests are not allowed back here? Uh, guests are allowed back here only uh, during the, the debarkation on, on ports. When they actually get off, the gangways are located on deck zero because it's basically the water line of the ship. Yep. And uh, that's where the gangways are located. But for the remainder of the, the, the voyage, this is basically a restricted access for uh, crew only. All right, we're going to start provisioning, right? Provisioning, All right, let's yes. go. Well, All right. We have the food, obviously, which consists of all your proteins, your frozen foods, uh, um, your, your dairy products. Then uh, you obviously have all the bar items that need to come on board and all the what we call central supply items, which are things like your kitchenware, uh, your paper plastic, uh, your office supplies, everything comes on board. Uh, on average, we load about 450 pallets uh, every turnaround day. You need to be spot on with your departure time. Nobody wants to tell the captain, uh, we're waiting on the eggs. No, nobody, nobody wants, nobody to, wants to tell the captain we're waiting on the eggs. Look at this. This is incredible. So this is... Come on, these are all eggs? Look at these eggs. How many eggs are like, what, what are some of the, the most eaten, most used products? I mean, what are we talking about? The numbers are pretty crazy. Well, eggs is definitely one of them. Uh, we have about 60,000 uh, uh, fresh eggs that we, uh, that we bring in every, every cruise. 60,000 a 60, week? 60,000 eggs a week, yes. <laughs> about uh, 9,000 pints of milk. Chicken breast, for instance, uh, we serve about uh, 10,000 a cruise, about 1,000 pounds of lobster, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, the, the operation really is that big. It's, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal operation. This food will get used. Of course, okay. yes. We do need to keep bar level for the unlikely event that something will occur that we are not able to, to uh, buy in the item or, or it has to carry us through on the next voyage. But yes, the bar levels are set in place. Things like fresh produce, however, we will not carry for, for maybe only, only two or three days into the next voyage. And then, uh, like I say, every cruise that gets ordered uh, more, you should only really have on board what you need on board. Uh, you don't really have space to, to store more of it. And we need to be very careful because safety also becomes a big factor. It's a lot of weight that the ship has to carry. The heavier the ship, uh, more fuel consumption. So yes, the ordering and the storage needs to be spot on. And with 5,000 people on board, if you run out of something, you can't go to the store in no, Turks and you, Caicos, for you instance. Cannot. Well, uh, no, it's not just that. Because of uh, our standardization, food safety and, 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 and all of these factors, we do not use outboard purchases or, or vendors. We don't go through vendors that Carnival does not have a history with. The areas, uh, the, the vendors will be inspected. They need to give a certification, making sure that the products that we have uh, and getting on board meets a certain standard, both from a quality and food safety perspective. So no, you can't just go outside and, 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 uh, in Grand Cayman and go buy some lettuce if you run out. You actually have to make sure that you get that product on board. So this is the main galley. It's where all the magic happens basically on a day-to-day basis it's the biggest part of the culinary operation or the food operation so you'll see that it's uh, it's very big and very shiny we maintain a very high level of sanitation on board we are required to as per uh, United States Public Health uh, we have two unscheduled uh, inspections uh, here and a pass rate of 87 so Carnival has a fantastic record on, on, on maintaining very high sanitation standards so over here we've got the chef table up to 16 guests uh, and it really is a fantastic experience. So uh, this is the garden manger section or the cold appetizer section. Nice. What's uh, up, fellas? This is, uh, like I said, where all the cold appetizers, the salads, the cold soups, everything gets prepared from here. Because we are such a massive operation, serving up to 4,200 guests on a formal night for dinner, a lot of preparation, a lot of attention to detail that goes into prep. Even the buffets, everything is standardized and looks exactly and tastes exactly the But same. we're also talking about not only quality control, but we're talking about consistency, right? Because these menus were designed X number of months ago, whatever it is to say, this is exactly what we're going to do, but to actually put it into practice definitely. can be challenging from no, time definitely. to time. And, and taking into consideration that this is not just on this ship, it has to be the standard and the consistency has to be the same across all the, the right. Carnival ships. How big is the culinary department on this ship? On this ship, we have 165 uh, chefs. Come on. Yes, Are 165 chefs. I mean, over a busy, during the busy season, our guests can count can go up to 5,000. And add on to that the additional 1,400 crew members. The amount of food and the production size is really mind-blowing. So hats off to these guys. They really, really uh, do their best and, and uh, do a phenomenal job.
How many meals is this ship going to serve a day? So it's, uh, it's around about 15 to 20,000 meals a day. The wait staff basically take the order from the guests inside the restaurant, punches it into the system, and sends the order. The system inside the, the center galley, there is a computer screen that the chefs monitor that actually shows the chef how many items have gone out for order or that have been ordered. So it basically tallies up. So if he knows that he needs to cook and prepare a thousand steaks, that means as well when the uh, guys come into the, the galley, they need to be able to know what has already been served because it's an ongoing process. So when the wait staff pick up their food and go down the line, they actually fire out the ticket. It's got a little barcode, and this actually tells the system, okay, the guy has picked up this many steaks, and it subtracts it off the count for the chefs inside the galley, so they actually know what is left. That way we control the production, and uh, uh, we don't end up with a lot of wastage. Every uh, station would be serving a different item, and the wait staff basically will join the line, put their tray down, and basically just move down the line and pick up. And pick up. But then also the guys are putting the plates up as the line goes. As somebody picks up, they put another one. Obviously, if there is nobody on the line, they will not they plate wait. anything else. They will put it because the food needs to go out fresh, fresh. and hot. Because they can't, they can't plate things and put them in a hot box. No. Because if they do that... It will actually lose the quality. It will lose yeah. quality quickly. Oh, the smell has changed. Oh, it does, right? It's, it's yeah, like every I wish area you could smell. has a different The smell has changed. The huh? smell that you're smelling at the moment is our uh, pastry section. This is probably one of my favorites. This is where the magic happens of all the cakes, all the sweets comes from, from here. here. Definitely. Of course, the bakery section. We make all our danishes on board. We actually bake our oh own croissants. We bake our own uh, uh, apple cinnamon pastries, our uh, custard danishes. They really, really are fantastic. My friend, thank you, sir. Thank very you very much. much. For this. We appreciate it. Of course, I could have spent another full day learning more about the daunting task of feeding the guests and crew on board, but alas, I had more of the ship to explore. I highly suggest taking a galley tour on your next cruise, or if available, a short tour of the bridge. As the captain and I continued our conversation, I asked him more about his hands-on management style. The decisions, they, all of them, eventually end up on your desk, correct? The majority, yes. Yeah. Uh, for uh, docking, for sure, yes. I'm, uh, I'm responsible, definitely responsible. Then, of course, there is many other activities every day, and I rely uh, much on my people, uh, the managers and the department I have here, who, who they are doing a great job. Of course, they always report to me, they always inform me. And that's what this means, be a leader. You are able to use the, the resource in the right way. How many people directly report to you? Directly, there is uh, only three people that they report to me. Okay. It's the hotel director, chief engineer, and the staff captain, and the human resource director. Then also we have uh, other people that uh, they, they report to me through them. To them, got it. Our job is not uh, only about one person. It's not all about the captain. It's all, all about the people. Right. People uh, are the most important things. The, my department I had, they're doing a great job, but also their team member, they do a great job right. every day. So to, in order to deliver the best service for our guests. What is a captain? Is there a definition that for, for these types of ships? Today, the captain uh, needed to be a leader. Leadership is the most important thing on this job. Your people have to feel uh, that you are a leader, and they have to rely on you every day. When you're at sea with passengers, do your days, are they different from week to week, or do you repeat a number of different types of days? I like to plan everything. I don't do things just because, just uh, like this. A lot of people don't realize that docking is one of the most challenging things. When you think about it, I mean, you have this modern technology at your disposal. At the same time, it's still powered and controlled by humans. That's the reason why it's a challenge, because it's done by a human, and the human make a mistake. Right. So Not you, of course. Uh, no, me. <laughs> but we all make a mistake. Of That's, uh, so the, being, a, a, being a captain, you have to, uh, you have to be prepared for, uh, for every kind, kind of event because things may change. Uh, the weather condition, uh, any things can change any time. So you always have a contingency plan in your pocket. So you have to take this task very serious. It's very important because the safety 
this is a maritime vessel. Safety is and has to be a, your number one priority. Safety is the most important things in everything you do. So when you run a ship, when you're piloting a ship, you need to pilot the ship in a safe way. So everybody must rely on you and everybody must feel comfortable that what you're doing is on the respect of the safety. Even from your perspective, you're always training. We, we have a continued training on the ship. When we talk about safety, environmental security, and also the hotel side, they always develop a continuous training for our team members every single day. How much time would you say you spend on the bridge in an average seven-day itinerary? On the bridge, uh, I spend uh, around uh, four or five hours per day. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the rest of my day is uh, all around the ship with my guests. When people learn more about what you do, what are they most surprised by? Many of the people, they think that the captain uh, can have everything, the captain can say something and he's he gonna get it. Or the captain, uh, he just needed to say, let's do this and he does. It doesn't work like that. Got it. He work a little bit different. He work about uh, a communication, about interaction, about to try to understanding what's going on and to find the solution that will be suitable for everybody. Usually I take a walk in the morning, around 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, just to see if everything is run well. I go visit the, the, the different department and checking some area which I believe are critical and uh, interacting with my team and with my crew, try to find uh, more information I can about what's going on. But occasionally, the captain decides to go to a different port. It's rare, but it happens. Why? This is, uh, may happen only if uh, the weather condition does not allow us to dock the ship safely. Right. That's is always back about to, safety. Back to the safety, yes. right. You know, a lot of preparation goes in, a lot of work goes in. Carnival is, is very good at and has become very good at this business. Yet, it's the 0.5% of the time when something doesn't go as planned, and the experience, that's what you draw upon, I would imagine, right? Yes. What you can buy is your education. You go to school, you educate yourself, you become a very well-educated person. Mm -hmm. But what you cannot buy is the intelligence of the person, of the people, and the experience. The experience comes with the time. Yeah. That's what you cannot buy. You have to get it. Captain, thank you for this, by the way. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful ship. Did you know every time I asked about his personal involvement, he always referred back to his crew, giving them the credit for the ship's successful operation. You see, while he is the captain, he relies on the information and the skills of his senior officers. And you may be surprised to learn how many of those officers are on board a ship this size. It's one thing to be an officer on board, but every detail is executed by the international crew. Think of it this way. The bridge is essentially the brains of the ship, where engineering is the heart. Every system, every engine, every redundant system is monitored from a room right behind this door. Let's go in. Stepping behind the scenes in a restricted area reminds me that a ship is similar to any other organization in that it has everyday issues to deal with, from healthcare to HR to security, but all of these functions have to operate in a small city that sails. But nothing happens on board the vessel without engineering. I loved learning about the propulsion, the maneuvering, the IT, the HVAC, and the list is almost endless. Our special thanks to the chief engineer for giving us a short tour, and a special thanks to Carnival for allowing us behind the scenes and for the gracious audience with Captain Okaras. So on your next cruise vacation, when you see the captain or any member of the crew, feel free to offer up a warm hello or a friendly smile because now you know how hard these men and women work behind the scenes to make sure your vacation is one you'll cherish forever. I'm Eric the Travel Guy. Thank you for exploring Beyond Your Backyard. Is it true that you do karaoke sometimes in a disguise? <laughs> karaoke? No, never done. No, are you sure? I, I, yeah. Okay, that's what I heard. No. Like, we don't get the best information all the no. time. <laughs> no, <laughs> You'd be a nice Kenny Rogers, Johnny Cash, you know. I'm no good with... Uh, no good? No. <laughs> I'm ready. Am I ready? Yes, sir, you are.
He said, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah! So on your next cruise, <laughs> what a pterodactyl flew over. Oh, no, no, that wasn't that. Take me to the bridge. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's going. Oh. With Phil, there's only one. Hi, I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. You know, I've been exploring the world professionally for more than a decade, and you know what I've discovered? Is that fantastic experiences await you in every corner of the globe, but you don't always have to travel that far to uncover them. So join me each week as we go on and off the beaten path, learn something new, and sample delicious cuisine. We're exploring beyond your backyard.